So we just imagine, yep. right, that in the future you can't go outside and this is how you have gunpla meets. All right? And so yep. you and I, <laughs> do you and I, it's just a two-person meet because no one else showed up. And I'm like, hey, my name's Scott, you're Chris, and you're like, yeah, and, I, and I'm like real noob and I want to know all about your shit and how you do it, and how you enjoy it, and what makes you enjoy it. And that, that's kind of really what it is. It, it, it's nothing, if you just forget the fact that in about a week and a half, maybe a thousand people are going to watch it, it just just totally disregard that. <laughs> yep, sure. <laughs> sure. Right. Good morning, good evening, and good day. My name is Scott Tiller for the Gunpla Insider um, for the Gunpla Network. Uh, again, this uh, episode I have with me a fantastic builder. Uh, as I say about all these guys, I always say this bloke's amazing, and I mean it about everyone. And I, I stalk them on Instagram and Facebook and stuff, and I, I reel them in because I really love the work they do. And it's always about someone who's a positive influence on the on the community. So today I've got Chris. Uh, aka YJ, aka Saintism. How you doing there, Chris? Hey guys, how's it going? Yep, yep. Okay, and um, I'll just get through a couple of uh, quick uh, words about our sponsors. We've got Canadian Gundam, uh, our current primary sponsor, and Clouded Communications. Uh, those guys hooked me up with my VMR and my camera gear and stuff, which kind of tries to make this a little, a little prettier. But I, I can use filters or whatever I need to do. Um, so all of that out of the way, uh, Chris, may I've sat back and looked at your, since I started Gunpla only about 12 months ago, I've sat back and looked at your gear and I'm like, this dude is some sort of like AI cyborg Gunpla building thing. Turns out you're actually a human being and it is an absolute, absolute pleasure to meet you, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, great. Um, pleasure meeting you too. Um, you been watching your interviews, they've been really, um, really informative. Oh, that's good. Um, Thank you. It's always a bit fun for me because um, I kind of chat with people and I see their gunpla, and then the first time I see them and meet them is like twenty minutes before an interview, and I'm like, oh, it's never a it's never a bad thing. But I'm always just a little bit like thrown off. So, yeah. Um, Chris, tell us. We're going to get into a few photos of your stuff here, but just uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Maybe like um, we we're talking before, and I guessed your age. And I always said, you know, you guys from that part of the world, you've always got great skin. And I picked about 27, 28. I was, I was a little off. Um, tell us a little about sort of like your home life and, you know, what you do for a living just to, just to let us know you really are a human being and not a cyborg. Yep, sure. Um, so I do, I guess you could call me an IT consultant. I do like a data warehousing business intelligence. Yep. Um, yep. My age, um, maybe let's put... You know, something like in the comments, you can come and guess my age. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, like, yeah. I was surprised. Let's just say you're but, old um, before you were, anyway. Well, you guessed, you guessed 26 before, so, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if, you, if you're interested to guess how old. Yeah, in the comments below, yeah. see if yeah. you can get how old Chris is. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so I'm a dad. I have a two-year-old son. Um, and thankfully, he's, um, you know, he's... I guess he's well behaved enough to, you know, let me enjoy building Gunpla, and um, my wife's also quite supportive. So yeah, I'm I'm quite thankful I actually have time to do this. Yep, and um, we did sort of uh, just when we were catching before we did touch on um, you do do a bit of commission work, and some some guys do. Um, without going into too much detail, my question for for you guys that do commission work is. Uh, you know, often people say, oh, "I'd love to do my hobby for a, for a job," and it's obviously that's not your primary uh, uh, income earner. But ha- how do you sort of draw that line between I'm building this gunpla for me, or I'm building this for someone else, and the different pressures that you get from giving something where someone's saying, "Here's money, and I want it to be like this." You know, you're an artist in that aspect. You become an artist. Uh, how do you? Yeah, approach- sure. Um, so I think. It's important to sort of buy into your client's idea. So um, at times you might get a, a request that doesn't quite fit your your sort of image of what something should be. But it's I think it's important to sort of like say like, all right, um, you know, I need to get on board. And then um, you sort of buy in and then you have a bit of more stake into it. 
Mm. Um, it does get a bit um, stressful at times because you've got you, you sort of have your own expectation of what something like how a build for yourself should go, but then yeah. you've got like the client's expectations which you don't quite know, like kind of stacked on top. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of that kind of makes it really stressful. So, I mean. Um, it's only sort of recently where I've sort of had the confidence, like after a few, to sort of like um, put that aside mm. and sort of say, okay, like if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for the client. Yeah, yeah, that's. that's but um, um, another thing is that you sort of like when you start building stuff, like and it takes quite a while, you sort of need like a side project to keep you motivated. So for the last commissions, few commissions I've done, I usually have like a have a HG, uh, HG kit or a SD kit going, just so I can sort of like you know. Get like a quick win on the side. Yeah, yeah, sure. And that sort of yeah keeps the motivation up. Yeah, yeah. I guess now that you've um, got quite a bit of work available for people to see, and like every builder has their style. So I suspect that uh, someone who wants a commission piece, they're going to come to you and go, "Dude, I've seen your stuff. I love it. Um, see the Mark II. Can you just take this strike gun and just make it look as awesome as that? And here's the kit." And how much is it going to cost me? Is it that simple, or have you had some challenges where people are like, I want to really like this guy's work and that guy's work, but yeah, what you do as well, and you're like, oh, it's difficult to kind of, you know, some people are like a impressionist painter, and this person wants, you know, like a really kind of like a Van Gogh type result. But have you had those situations come up yet? Yeah, sometimes people ask for like, um, they they send me images for like a kit that's got like, um, like heavy scribing and mods to it, and usually I say like. Um, well, I can paint it like that, but it wouldn't have all the details um, that that model has done to it. Yeah. But generally, if it's just a simple paint job, I can probably copy it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's great. All right, we're going to crack into some photos now. Um, I've got, what I've done is I've asked you to, with a, a little G drive, to give me some folders of probably some of the stuff that you think is your best work. And look, to be honest, it's all bloody fantastic. Afterwards, we'll go, um, I'll show your both your um your web page and your facebook page and everybody can go there and just see the plethora of just amazing um saintism style work so let's just uh, you let me know when you can see this but we're gonna start with some good old-fashioned thunderbolt um oh yeah there, there's a there's a lot of work it's almost two kits really isn't it um just out of the box so i'm just gonna sort of flick through these photos there's only four or five there um as I said before, don't worry too much about going on the technicalities. Um, probably most of us won't even freaking understand what you're talking about, nor be able to replicate it because it's gorgeous. But yeah, just talk us through this this particular build and was at what stage of your sort of um, building journey was this? Is is it a recent one? Did you learn? Did you did you fail? Like um, you know, just yeah, let us in on on this Thunderbolt build for you. Yep. So I think I built this in like um, October 2016, and it's it's probably the last kid I built before my son was born. So I just like I kind of like, you know, my last hurrah, I guess, before like retirement. Uh, yeah. Um, so sort of sitting around retirement, kid, doing a lot of thinking of like, is this the last kid I'll ever build? Like, holy cow, this might be it. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I literally just went out, uh, got the kit. Um, it took like um, one and a half months, I think. And from box um, to it's actually. Uh, sorry. Is that like from box to fully painted and assembled, ready to to display? Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, go on. Yeah, and um, uh, this kit is sort of notorious for like the arms breaking up because there's um, there's some kind of peg in the in the shoulder armor that um, it's it's got like an extra ratchet in it that that helps it hold the big gun up. Right. So, um, like, that was a really, like, you know, like, come to Jesus moment when sort of attaching an arm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And the uh, the bagging around the, the joints and that, everybody whinges about that. But I guess if, you have, if you've been around more than a month, you know what you're up against, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was one of the trickier parts of the build. Yeah. Did would did you um is it is it a kid that you'd recommend? Like some people really whinge about stuff, but I like I like when someone put this much work into something, I'm gonna assume that you enjoyed it to have finished it. Yeah. So, I, I like I, I like kids where you get lots of lots of stuff. Yeah. So this one like when you see all the parts arranged like that, it's kinda of like really satisfying. 
Yeah, yeah. Are, are you an anime watcher? As far as like, I don't watch any anime except for uh, Gundam. Basically, I watch a little bit here and there off to the side. But are you? Uh, do you enjoy the Gundam anime? Yeah, uh, I try to watch all the Gundam's um, animes. Um, I haven't seen everything, but uh, like most recent stuff, I've, I've watched. Uh, did you did you suffer through Build Divers? Oh no, I skipped that. Uh, I mean, yeah, nice one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we all have our thing, don't we? And whatever, it's got its place. We all know why it's there, and that's fine. Um, yeah, cool. It. Uh, I think um, what we'll see the pre shading that you do is. Um, it's uh, you walk that fine line of kind of like over appreciating and picking your battles within each component, and like you can see, it's really heavy on the shields. And in reality, you know, once the kit's assembled like that, the shields are right there in your face. So there's no point kind of drowning the whole thing in you know, appreciating every square millimeter. And I think that's what I enjoy about yours is it's obvious you can appreciate, but you don't have to make it obvious on every single part of the kit. Um, it's, it's, I, I personally think it's a really good balance. There's a lot to learn there. Um, you know, sometimes less is more because you highlight the areas you have appreciated. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I prefer that sort of really subtle um, shuttle shading. Yeah. Um, the, way, the way that sort of people traditionally do it is they sort of appreciate, like, with black. And I find that a bit, it's a bit too shadowy. Yeah. So I just use like sort of like a, I actually just paint like the base color and then I add white to the paint. Yeah, yeah. And then I just use that for highlights. Yeah, I've got, you've given me a folder of pictures here, which is um some you called it shading. So if you don't mind, we might just have a while we're on the topic, sort of go through this. Um, I don't know what the kit is, I don't know anything about it, but um it might give a bit of insight into your approach. So. Uh, as I flick through the pics, you can kind of uh, give us a bit of info. And don't feel like you've got to get too technical, but, yeah, share some of your magic with us. Yep, sure. Um, so this is, like, how I paint uh, yellow parts normally. Um, so when I when I sort of uh, started out shading, like, yellow was one of the hardest colors because um, when you yellow doesn't exactly cover too well, Yeah. Even, even when you add white. So what I do is, like, I normally paint, like, an orange coat. Yep. And then I sort of um, I sort of do like a white, um, I guess like it's a highlight layer, mm-hmm. and that just sort of like um, gives that sort of orange pre shade. But because because you're sort of spraying the white on top, you get sort of better control on how the shading looks. Sort of filtered, I guess. And then, yeah. And then what I do here is like so I um, I sort of mist a coat of uh, yellowy orange over, mm-hmm. and then you can see sort of like the uh, the orange pre shades like kind of. Um, you know, coming out of it, but you yes. get that sort of really yep. intense yellow in the middle. Mm. And then the final step is like, I, I add white to that yellow paint. So it becomes a bit, um, a bit more faded, I guess. And then I spray in the center of each panel. Yeah. And then you can see like this sort of blend from orange to yellow to like really faded yellow. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's interesting is you've only sort of used, uh, so you've used like an orange and then a white and then a yellow and then kind of a bit more white to sort of make it pop a bit more. But, you know, when you look at some pre-shading and some, especially like pre-shading, say, like black on a on a white sort of arm or something like that, you can tell there's sort of two colours, maybe three there. But you've sort of kept it really minimum. You're working with minimum colours, but you get just through the different, um, the tints of the whites in those two stages, you get that nice transition between the two. That's um, Yeah. Especially you can see, I'm not sure if you see my mouse, but like the way it kind of, it's almost that, that circular motion where it's not parallel to the lines. It's sort of just in the center. Light falls like that. Light doesn't fall like, boom, there's a square edge. Light always dissipates and fades as it hits surfaces. Yeah. And then we've got these pictures here of a uh, gray panel. Oh, it's a dark blue. So that's the, that's the blue Lube. parts of the, um, of the hazel hududu. Right. So I'm just so here's like the base coat of um, of blue, and then I just add white to that blue paint, into that blue paint, and just sort of like spray, spray you know gently in the center of each panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is like a gray part of this is like a white part of the double zeta. So um, that's just like a base coat of uh, gray, I think, a uh, grayish blue. Yeah. And I do that for white parts, and then you can see here like um, I just take white and I just sort of spray like you know, sort of build up that shading, that white shading over time. Mm. Mm. I think what um, 
what really there's two things that strike me right now. One is you make it so sound so damn easy because um, that's just experience and knowing what you can and can't or what you do and don't want to do. But also like the the why you've laid there. Again, you haven't sort of followed that parallel line up inside each panel and you kind of get that framing. It's it's sort of semi-intermittent. You know, in the middle even, there's sections where it's almost like you've sort of gone around and whether you've done it intentionally, but you're just, you're happy just, you know, when people chip, they just sort of chip, 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 chip. And um, I think that's what makes the difference. You know, when people, some people appreciate and it looks very specific and it's almost like too specific. It's almost like you can just do that line marking kind of stuff and you get a very similar result. Well, um, when you do it this method, you can sort of have, you sort of have flexibility because you, if you want it to be sort of darker, you can just sort of lay it off a bit. Yeah. But, um, um, it's. It, I find it easier to do than the actual um, sort of appreciating the black and the lines because you don't have to like have that kind of precise airbrush control. Yeah, right. You know, trying to trying to spray directly on the line. So it's it's more like trying, like instead of walking the tightrope, you can like just stay between the lines, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Walk a, walk a nice plank instead. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, have you? Did you go for like pre shading pretty quickly? Like when you started building. Yeah. Like- so how, how many yeah. sort of like hits did you snap before you went, hey, I'm going to airbrush, and then went, hey, this is fun, I love it? Um, so it started a long time ago. So I think my first kit was in, like, 2003. And then I picked up an airbrush about three years later. Yeah. And because um, because all the Bandai kits, if you go look at them, the manuals and um, sort of promo pictures back then, they're all, they're all appreciated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like in that in that kind of in that kind of style. So I just I just thought to myself I just want to be able to do that, and I um, you know I just went about trying to figure out you know how it was done and and I guess um, like at the time like Max Max Photography was kind of like a thing. So we I started I started doing that style where you sort of you spray the whole part black and then you like you you gradually build the color up. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. And what I found was that 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 takes a really long time. If you spray if you spray like a, a blue over a black, it takes a really long time for the blue to come up. Right. And it looks it looks really like sort of shadowy, like yeah. looks really dark. Yeah. So so after after like um, after like a few kits, I sort of said like, all right, I'm I'm not going to start on black anymore. I'll just start on the darker version of the of the color I want. I'm after. So I guess that's how it ended up as. As how you see it now. Mm-hmm. All righty. Now the the next kit we're going to look at. I think um, we discussed it. This kit, this build was a bit of a turning point for you. Uh, this was one of the the ones that you really wanted to sort of share. So um, yeah, I, I know there's so much work there. I really do love everything about it. But um, like the weapon for me has this perfect balance between a yeah, the sort of gun medley realism stuff, but it still has that kind of anime feel to it. Um, yeah. I, th- I think it's what I really like about a lot of your builds, all your builds is there's a there's a beauty and there's a realism to them, but I can still look at them and I can still see them in an anime, in a manga type of, uh, of, of fashion. You know, I, I interviewed Moki the other day. It's the same. It's it's like a lot of... Some people got this ability just to build, just like it's almost just been bought... Out of a uh, out of a comic or out of an anime, so yeah. Sorry, but the weapon right there, I freaking love it. So I'm gonna yeah, take- thanks. Um, actually, speaking of Moki, because actually, um, he mentioned he he learnt off a video like the Pamo Sukuru. Um, yeah. So I literally, I I actually watched that same video when I was learning, and that's that's actually how I learned how to paint, how to shade that way as well. So isn't that good? You know, that's yeah. For the little tree, and it all sort of goes out, and there'll be two people who'll learn off you, and two people will learn off him, and that's how it works. Yeah, and it's like literally he went he went to sort of like that weathering style, and I went the other way to the clean, you know. Yeah, I guess. yeah, but they are very similar yeah. styles, especially the way you guys shade. You you just everything just gets tinted down or or up. It doesn't sort of it doesn't need to have these poppy colors. Um, his colors are kind of crazy; they blow me away. They just have these yep. little. We're crazy pastels. Anyway, we're talking about you today, so let's let's have a yarn about this one. Yep. So I built this in 2014, I think, and it's actually for the um, like HLJ. We're having sort of like a, a online competition at the time. Yeah. So I'd say like this kit is probably like it's 
I'd say it's like the genesis of 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 my style because it's got that sort of trademark, not that trademark, that signature sort of yeah. black, you know, black background, yeah, and um, and photography style, yeah. And um, this is probably the first kit I tried like extra hard on, I guess, because um, like because it was for a competition, obviously. So like I went the extra mile and I I did things I normally wouldn't have, like I painted like the small details and like mm. like like the arm vents and you know. And um, I don't interrupt, but painting for photography is different. Like, you, you, especially when you want to get in and, and be close up and show people the effort, because you can paint this little detail and you bring in, because we'll talk about your photography a bit later, but you can get right in there and show, look, I painted this, but you also open yourself up to exposing other flaws, like if your seam isn't quite right or if you get a bit of a scratch or something somewhere else so you've got to be all over it it's easy what i do in my photography is i take a kit and i've got a few lights and stuff and i use my iphone and i throw a few little filters on it it looks like i enjoyed my build and, and that's what really counts to me but you've got courage when you're getting in like that so i just want to highlight that when you paint like you do for photography you, you're really now you're walking the line there's no plan yeah and um and that's like sort of it's sort of like a thing that pushes you to sort of uh, get better at your finish. So, yeah. like yeah. when you, yeah when you when you're able to see take a photo and see like see like dust and like yeah, yeah, random yeah. dog hairs on your kit. Yeah, like, it's, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I, I still have nubs. That's that's not, I'm at that level where I don't even see them. I have god hands, and I might occasionally I might pull one of these little things out and I go, "What the hell do you do with these again?" Like, oh, whatever, you know. I have like a sixty second sanding rule paint and top coat will finish off but when you guys are at this level man it's just it's so tight and so clean yeah how long yep. do you reckon so you this would have been one that you would have kind of sat down each night and give it a really good nudge how long do you think this took you from box to hey today here's my photos uh usually for me it's like one and a half months so um like because back then I was using acrylics and I'd have to wait like a few days after each painting to sort of like let let the paint sort of dry. So that's probably what took that's probably what takes the longest, I guess. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. What what do you what do you so you obviously you don't use acrylics as much these days? Where have you gone? I actually just I actually switched to um, lacquer paint this like six months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do you have, what are your, I mean, we're not going to plug, um, you know, products or anything. Oh, here's something if you want. We're not anti, but at the same time, we're not, we're not waving any particular flag. Is there a particular kind of brand that you're sort of leaning to? Or are you one of these Buddhas that's got like six from this and seven from that because you just can work with everything and it's all, you know, it's just natural for you? Um, I just use, um, I use Mr. Color because um, back, back when I was using acrylics, I was using Mr. Hobby because pretty much, because um, all the Gundam, um, paint mixes, they tell you to use Mr. Hobby, so that's just what I went with. Sure. And so when I went to Lacquers, I just like, oh, okay, I, I need something familiar, so I'll, I'll just go with Mr. Color. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. Yeah. It's so great. for this kit, yeah. I actually, um, I think I got second place oh, in the well, intermediate category. As in, like, throughout the entire universe kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Um, second oh. place in the intermediate category. So. Um, it's actually a bit more meta than that because um, cause do you know do you know Gaijin Gunflies, um, Sid? Uh, no, I'm not as familiar with uh, as the seed stuff as I am just generally. I don't know. I mean, um, so Gaijin Gunpla, um, or Sid, Sid, he used to run, he used to work at Hobby in Japan. Oh, right. I'm sorry. And, a real person. Yep, yep. So he used to work at Hobby in Japan and he was hosting um, Gunpla TV. Right. So, so... I actually, because um, I knew he was going to be one of the judges, so I actually went to his website, gunshinguntla.com, and I, I looked through the list of his favorite kids, and I saw I saw he really liked the Sword Impulse. Oh, no. And I thought to myself, I thought to myself, um, I've got a Force Impulse. Yeah. Maybe I'll build that and get some extra brownie points. Nice. It's a, it's a, and I guess he liked it. You roll the dice, don't you? Because you see those shows where people get up and they, you know, like, is it like, you're the voice and stuff, and... They might have like a, you know, Jimmy Barnes is the one of the judges. And they're like, I'm going to do a Jimmy Barnes song. You can either win yeah. that or you can just yeah. crush that and just, it might go really, really bad for you. So, yeah, good on you for rolling the dice on that. And um, there's the reward. Nice one. 
Mm. Can I, I'm yeah. going to ask you about your weapon. Like, um, I don't, I'm still using acrylics. I'm just in a position where um, I, don't, I can't really, I, I, I paint in my house and my extraction isn't as good as it could be and I don't really kind of want it wafting through the house if I use lacquers. Um, what's your process with a finish like like the, the weapon there? So that weapon is actually just a, um, it's just like a normal, um, so I paint like a dark gray and then I sort of shade it with a lighter gray. But I think um, I think that's just not top coated with, with a complete flat. It's like sort of a semi-gloss. So yeah. I think that's why you can see it's a bit shiny. Like, like a, a satin or something. Yeah, like a satin, uh, satin finish. Yeah, yeah, nice. And all the other uh, red there, that's that's you with a brush and then some sort of panel lining in there. That's not a decal. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's mm. actually... So that, that red part on the gun, that's actually like a separate piece on, oh, the, yeah. on the rifle. Oh, that's yeah. not solid. No. Yeah, it blows me away with stuff like that. I'm, um, I'm going to be building... Uh, well, I've started some legs up there somewhere. Uh, RG Zaku, and I've, got, I've done a few RGs, and I still think if someone said to you, all right, you can have a lifetime supply of Gunpla, but it's only one grade, it would have to be RG, because it just... There's so many aspects. They could do like MG size RGs. Some people say some of them are as good, but I'm doing the Zarko, and it's just the way the part separation goes. It's like three types of green just in in one leg, and it just it blows me away when Bandai does that. I just they're very clever the way they put this in that grade and this in that grade, and you kind of got to build them all to really enjoy you know the whole rainbow of Bandai. Yeah. Um, so once you'd sort of uh, got through this guy, like, it must have given you a real sort of sense of, especially when you got the intermediate second in the whole universe from the guy that you targeted and picked exactly the right song to sing. <laughs> it must have really given you a real nudge, like, wow, I, I really enjoy it, you know. Everybody likes to be to be a winner. Where, I might go on to these um, Gadex seed builds. Were these prior, were these before or after? That was after, so um, I think that was in the same same or following year. So I I I shamelessly am a Gundam Seed fan. Um, Seed's, I really love the design. You know Seed is the only Gundam I've watched outside UC. They still look yep. like war machines to me, and there's still a pretty good story. I've got the um, Owl Strike there as a clear, and I've also got. A PG I'll strike, which were with the sky grasp and stuff. So we're together on that one. Don't you worry. Yep. So I can't agree on the story, but the the early seat designs. Oh man, I really love them so much. I don't know why, but it's like they're kind of um, they're kind of basic, but also they've got kind of unique characteristics as well at the yeah. same time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they are so similar, yet they all have their own. The way they kind of design them, they have their own kind of like the. The, uh, this is the Buster, right? It just yep just carries huge guns and just accuracy by volume is the way it works, you know. Yeah. Yep. So I I decided I I wanted to build all four. So I worked my way up from like my least favorite to the you know, to the my favorite. So I started with the um, I think I started with the Aegis. Right. That'd be and, this guy, the red yep. one. Yep. Yep. So. Uh, I think I kind of figured out, like this was a kid, I kind of figured out how to paint, um, how to sort of shade, um, shade red, because red I was having a lot of trouble with. Yeah. Um, back when, in, in the previous Force Impulse build, the, the, the shading in the red was a bit like uh, pinkish. Mm. So that's because like when you, add, when you add white to red, it kind of turns like this, into this like kind of hot pink color. Mm. So what I found was that you kind of need to add a bit of yellow, um, yellow into that mix. Right. So you get kind of this like this orangey. Yeah. You get some of this orangey faded look. Yeah. Yeah. So it keeps some of its radiance in a fashion. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So then, from the, I always like the uh, the uh, the beam sabers on the feet. <laughs> kind of cracks me up a bit. But I guess you need them when it's uh, in there close. No one. Expects that. No one expects, yeah, beam savers on your feet. No, they do not. <laughs> uh, now, I'm not as familiar yep. with, with the kits 
as you would be and the characters. And also, I'm not uh, sure if these photos are in order of what you kind of built because you obviously said, I, I, I built them as I liked them. So you can just sort of fill us in with that information as we go along. Yep, so I actually did build this next. This is the Blitz Gundam. Um, it's probably the least interesting out of the four because it's just like a... Like, it's only gimmick is that sort of that claw and the, sh- and the big shield, but it's got this kind of really, like, sports car look to it, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. like it's only got its good looks going for it. Yeah, yeah, it's handsome. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. It's got that kind of, like, AMG Mercedes type thing. Whoop, and off it goes, and you're like, well, that's a good-looking car. Yep. Mm. And then we're on to the bus. This one I'm familiar with. It is. I will own one of these one day. It is pretty rad. Rad. It's what you see. Yeah, that's double weapon. That's probably my favorite. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite design, but it's my favorite. It's like my favorite uh, kit out of the four. Right. Mainly because it can do you know that that pose basically. Yeah. Did they not all have as much sort of articulation and balance as the Buster is due to like backpacks and things? Uh, I wouldn't say that. It's just that, um, I don't know, this pose really kind of speaks to me. Like, it's, like, the fact that they can get a model kit to do this pose, it's it's a bit, um, at the time, it was, like, really mind-blowing. Mm, definitely, definitely. I think this is a, um, uh, a really, probably a challenging uh, colour scheme to work with, too, because you've got that kind of, uh, that bony colour over the white, or vice versa, the white over the bony colours, but um, it, it could be very easy. Like, I think if, if I even dared to attempt something like that or someone of my level, it could just come out looking kind of grimy and muddy, like it'd sort of walk through, like, some swampy stuff. Um, yep. So I definitely commend you that it, you've done exactly what you do with all your other kits. You, your highlighting and your appreciating is just... It's intermittent. It's, you know, you've got all the right edges, but, again, less is more. Um how does this how does this bony color come out? What do you start with on that? So I think it was like a it was like a tan or like a I think they call it sail color. Right. So you oh, just start yeah. that sail color. Like old canvas type sail. Yeah, so you just start with a base color, that sail color, and then you like you add white and maybe a bit of yellow and that sort of gives you that that sort of faded version of that base color and then you sort of, sort of highlight you know, highlight the panels of that. Yeah. Mm. Do you do any scribing? Have you sort of gone down that road? Uh, I think oh. I tried it once. Um, I wasn't quite happy with the results, so I sort of said, like, um, I might I might put that aside until like sort of figure out everything I need to figure out about painting first. So, um, yeah, I've had one try. I've you know put that put it on the back burner. Maybe I'll get back to it when I when I yeah. sort of feel. Um, yeah. Yep. We'll move on to our next kit. Here we go. So are we, are we building these in? Oh, the bust you said you like the most, but are we still sort of moving up the list of the... Yeah, so the duel, the duel is like my second second favourite. Um, again, you get a lot of stuff with this kit. It's like similar to that uh, full armor Thunderbolt. So I say, the big shoulder pod and stuff. Yeah. So you get the parts for the, you know, the regular duel, but then you get all these like armor parts and then you get a big bazooka and, you know, and um, I think it's, like, really one of the best-looking, like, it's got that sort of Mark II look to, to it, if you, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, I do, I do. It's almost, and also, like, I like the um, the sort of the leg thrusters on the side. It's, uh, I, I, I like, my most favourite mobile suit is the um, the Stein. It's not just on the original Vercar, not the narrative. They're both great, but that's where I'm. That's where my heart lies. And on the legs, you've got that kind of... The outside armor look almost looks like those sort of leg thrusters and stuff. So there's a lot of goodness in this in this kit. No doubt about that. It might be on my list, thanks to you. Mm. And I see you're not afraid to use, like, stickers, like the, the shiny ones on the weapon and stuff. Like, people whinge about stuff, but sometimes things just work, right? So you just use them. Yeah, um, for foils, I usually just use stickers because I know, like, I... like. Whatever I do, it'll probably never look as shiny as the foil. So, like all the eyes, I always use the foils. Yeah. And in most of my pictures, you can, you can see like it, it lights up really well. Like you can see like the, the eyes kind of shining through. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you get in the right angle looking down, it's like that can be quite ominous. It can really like, yep. make a picture really stand out. Uh, where are we going? Oh, it's just the duel with all its bits. Yeah, very thunderbolty when you put it like that, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I 
I wish there were more kids where you can kind of do this kind of picture. It's it's actually quite uh, quite fun. Yeah, how, how do when you, you find, can arrange stuff like that? Yeah, how do you find with uh, like obviously you don't kind of sit in every night and put all the parts on and tear them off and put them on and tear them off. But with this particular part, this particular kit, and also the thunderbolt, do you find the um, the adding and removing of the extra armor? Do you find that um, anyway kind of damaging to the the work you've done or do you find it all kind of goes together pretty easy and you can just pull it off and pose it another way on your shelf for you know without too much worry so the stuff like this i usually put it on i never take it off because i i know as like the process i'm actually putting it on you can kind of tell as it kind of clicks into place it, it's kind of like you can hear that really like that scratchy noise so it's <laughs> you definitely definitely it's gonna kill the paint job so i usually just put it on and i never take it off yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I've got a, a um, an RG Unicorn, which I bought off someone pre-built, but it's already had, like, a couple other version stuff, and I'm like, yeah, sure. And it's um it's just sort of up there somewhere, just being cool, and it's in Unicorn mode. And everybody says, you got to transform. I'm like, yeah, but there's so many steps, and I'm afraid I'm going to break a thing and all that sort of business. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. It looks great as it is. It's like, uh, and there we go. All four. Wow, that looks wicked like that. That really does. That'd be, yeah, that'd be great on the back of a shirt or something, you know, with the the Zaft kind of logo on yep. the shirt. I actually tried putting that picture on the shirt. It didn't yeah. turn out too well because there's just too much going on for a shirt. I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe the color balance is a bit kind of wonky. Maybe if you sort of shifted them around a bit and took like the, maybe if you took the Buster to the right and brought the ages in the center, so to get that light to dark, it might kind of. And I guess you could kind of digitize it a bit, take it a bit, make take it a bit more like comic book style, and that might kind of just make it shirt worthy. Who knows? But that picture, yeah, I mean, it'd be a beautiful print, like a canvas print up on your wall. Yeah. Um, so I wish I could, but like, because um, I, I took this picture of like a, a point and shoot camera, so it's like when you blow it up, it looks really bad. Like it looks good on the screen, but when you blow it up, like you can see, like, um, like it'll be a bit fuzzy because of the, the DPI still. Look. Bit of noise in there, that sort of business. Yeah, yeah. I kind of really wish I could go back in time and and sort of take that picture again with like my the camera I have now. Do you not have the kits anymore? They're just they're just like really dusty because it's been it's been for five years now. I think. Oh, right. you only have to dust like this part. It's like you know, <laughs> yeah, with other cans of yeah. you know, hairspray or something. Anywho, yeah, there's always something new to move on to, isn't there? Yeah, but I would like to go back and actually rebuild, actually these four specifically, because like I know I could just do like a way better job now. Well, if you can get it into like a five hundred by five hundred by five hundred, it'd be a pretty rad um, kind of um, GBWC dio, you know, all four of them, kind of beating the living snot out of an owl strike or something. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> and they did several times. Yeah, okay, we're back to the beginning there. So, uh, look, we've talked we've talked a lot about your um, your photography. So, and I, I personally believe it's um, a, a large aspect of what makes a good builder a great builder online. Um, you see a lot of builds, and you sort of go, "Oh, like that's so good," but like I've got buddies that are brilliant builders, but they kind of just take pictures on their desk, you know, near their lamp and that. And there's been at least one or two where I'm sort of like, just go to Spotlight, which is, you know, for those around the country, around the world, it's like a, you buy material and sewing stuff and you just go to the scrap bin and five bucks and you get a sheet of something. You take it home, you get a couple of cheap lamps from, um, you know, from the cheap Kmart or whatever like that, stick the white bulbs in it and then start fiddling. And like I said, I do all mine with an iPhone and it's surprising what, you can get away with. Um, you take it another level. Uh, let's just pop this up here. This is you obviously gave me these photos because you want to share the secrets behind the velvet curtain. Um, yeah. <laughs> and this this yeah, is so. how it's done, isn't it? It is this really. It is really this easy. I've done it with cardboard boxes and um, like the grease paper on the side. You know, the stuff you put like under a pizza or something in an oven. That wax paper or in a toasted sandwich maker. You can you can get away with a lot with just a couple of. One thing I would say is, like, you've got to get all your bulbs to try and match so you get that yep. nice even light all the way around. So that's my uh, ring. You share us your secrets because that's what this is about. Yeah, so my dad actually built 
this is actually my second light box. Um, the first one was actually made out of like a cardboard box. I cut the sides out and I put yep. like you know like a like muslin cloth on the side. So, it, yep. so um, I found it was a bit small and I couldn't find a like a cardboard box big enough. So I asked my dad actually build build this one. It's actually like a sixty centimeter cube wooden frame. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, like it's got like you know cut um like cloths just draped over the sides and the top. Yep. And that's used like as diffusers. Yep. There's um there's six lights in that photo. Um I've got a few more now. But um you know like I I can move around if I need, but that's that's like that sort of gives it all the lighting I need to sort of Yeah, but it um, does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The um the two lights at the top, um I guess they're interesting in that they're not um directional and even the one off to the left of the camera, the way we're looking at the photo, um, they're not directional at the model. So, you know, you get that just sort of like an ambient light. And I've seen that myself when you can you can point lights right at something and sometimes it sort of catches a shine a bit too much and you can just start to turn lamps away and it's almost like you're just dimming the light down a bit. You're still getting the quality. You're still getting the brightness, but you're just sort of dulling it a little bit. Um, is that what you're sort of going for with some of those sort of, some of those lamps up the top? Yeah, so like if you if you shine a light directly at the at the model, it's like a bit too bright. So you kind of need to like aim it aim it off to the side, or you kind of mm. need to make it even face the other way and have like a piece of paper that it's reflecting off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've come off the sides, and then that muslin, even though it's going to filter some through, it's still going to have some level of reflection, a second yep. level reflection combined with the outer lamps from the sides. Um, I think probably what's really key in combination with that is that um it's so black like it is and this has got to be to do with i'm not a photo genius at all but to do with your shutter speeds and and sh- and you know aperture settings and stuff that you've got with a digital slr because i think my lighting is half decent but with an iphone it's like depending on your background it'll affect what your entire kit looks like it'll change you, know, you can have a white background, and all of a sudden everything's really dark because it's getting super exposed. Um, so, so yeah, try and share a little bit of your your wisdom on that. Yeah. So normally when I take pictures, I I take them at like um, I take a few sort of at different exposures. Yeah. And then um, I can sort of pick the best one afterwards. But like, like taking the pictures not the end because usually like there is a bit of post processing. I'll go. I'll go into Photoshop and I'll play like the I'll play the levels, I'll play the contrast. Right. Um I'll t- I'll tune the blue levels a bit if I feel um it's not what you know, if the photo's not what I think it should be. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. so for this Thunderbolt photo I, I think I turned the contrast up a bit. And that's yeah. why that's why the blacks look really black. Yeah. And you can do that on your iPhone too. I will almost Unless it's a unless it's like a snap whip because I like, people go oh no one wants to see snaps I'm like well say a Sazabi like it's a hundred and sixty dollar kit a mate of mine I work with has just started Gunpla yeah and he's like what should I buy and I'm like buy the Jagan like it's like giving him a brand new nice car first kit he's built other stuff heaps of Weimar stuff and then what well, I've done that was well, so, well, I'll get the Steinberg car like I can't believe that's your second kit um, and now he's bought the Sazabi I'm like. I want someone to see what a Sazabi looks like out of the box for 160 bucks because it is a really beautiful thing and you don't worry too much about your filters. But when you're doing this on your iPhone, you can do a whole bunch of stuff with colors and, and just contrasts and saturations that, yeah, it's not going to look like this, but you can put the effort in and just get that little bit extra. Um, so, so how long in Photoshop? Like, does this take you an hour or some of them you just like, you've got preset filters that you just kind of throw on stuff? Um, so the, the actual, the actual Photoshop is not that long cause it's like, you just move, you just move the slider like, and, and sort of, mm. you get like this live preview of what the image looks like. So it's not all too, um, time consuming. It's, it's because like, there's a lot of photos to do it too. And, yeah. and some some might need more, you know, adjusting than others. That's what takes um, the longest. I'm trying to get that uniformity across, like a a series of photos. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Like I said before, I, I think that um, I think that uh, one of the one of the keys is 
to being a you can be a good builder and you can share it but if you really want people to and for me it's like I build for myself I build for my mates and it's nothing better than just having a great build and, and showing your buddy I had a mate ever last night of playing arcade games and showed him a kid I'm working on at the moment and he's like whoa that's awesome and you get that little fluffy feeling you know and seeing each other just work through stuff you know but if you want to be online and you want people to go thumbs up that's really great oh it's awesome I want to be just like you when I grow up you've got to go that step and you've got to put the effort in like you do and if you're fortunate to have that space and a dad that can build you a box and some lamps <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll get those results you know if you want to be a commission builder uh, at least dabble in it but you're going to have to go down that road you can't deny it um, we've st- still got a couple of nice builds to look at here I'm going to let you choose it's between the the double Z of a car or the Hazel Custom what do, what do you think where should we go next um, this is the Hazel Custom because I literally just finished that like last week oh okay excellent and that's actually it's actually a commission build as well. Okay. Uh, educate me. Is this an MG or a HG? It's the MG. It's actually a P Bandai, and it's actually it's actually based off the Gundam Mark II, the MG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with a, with the P Bandai of this, was this a recolor, or was there some awesomeness to go with this kit? Um, what do you mean by recolor? Oh, well, a lot of people whinge about PB and they go, it's the same kit, but now it's green. Like, why would I pay extra money for that? Or does this come with, like, extra weapons, extra shields, a water slide kit? Like, why buy a PB and I? Ah, uh, right. So this this particular design, it's you can only get it in PB and I. For some reason or other, all these um, advanced of Zeta kits, they're always P Bandai. I don't know why um, yeah. Bandai do this. Because so. they can. Yeah, because they can. They want print money. Um, but yeah, if you, if you want a Hazel Custom, this is the only way to get one, pretty much. All right. Mm-hmm. I, I love uh, that little bit of metallics poking out, poking out of his right ankle there. That's uh, just, it's sort of, and even your thrusters there, super pops, because everything else is nice and matte. Yep. So that's actually um, SMS uh, stainless steel. So. I actually really like um, the SMS Metallics, so shout out to um, yeah. Scott Taylor. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's cool. Did is this was this a pretty much like a, so you said this was a commission job? Did someone sort of go, I like that, I like that, make it awesome, or did you have any sort of challenges with this particular build, paint job? Yeah, this. Um, so he he um, the client just said, I just want a hazel custom with dot colors, and I. I I originally went like, all oh, right, this will be easy. But then when I like sort of opened up the kit, it's it's actually really, um, there's a lot of detail painting that you need to do. Right. Um, there's a lot of like, you know, parts that sort of need like a like hand painting or like 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 those little black um, black parts in the in the orange part in the knees. So that's that's like that was all, all orange originally. You need to sort of mask it off and paint it. Oh, those kind of like big double vents on the front of each knee. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so those those are orange. Um, the little V crutch, the yellow um, piece in the yep. in the red under the cockpit. So that 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 yellow V that that was um, that's all red. So you need to mask that all. Wow. What do you tend to in those sort of tighter spots? What 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 product do you use to mask? I just use masking tape and right. um, yeah. I love the uh. I, there's lots to like about it, but I like the helmet, just that that sort of extra sensor package on the front of the V fin and just the way it works over the head, it just has a yeah, it suits everything else. It's just a massive beast of a machine, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's a really good looking kit, but it's like there's quite a lot of work going into it and like Has it got like red thumbs? Actually, what, yeah, so in the in the actual um like from, uh, promo pictures and, and the actual manga, it's got it's got red. Um, all these Titan suits have red red fingernails, I guess. Mm. So those have to be masked off and painted as well. Yeah, right. I've never noticed that before, but I probably will now. Yeah, I love the, they keep hitting on your pre shading, but um, it's easy to walk away. Like with the feet, just that dark grey, that kind of charcoal. Again, you've just sort of made that pop, and it's the. It's the shading or the highlighting, sorry, that that really draws your eye to the actual colour 
of that section. You know, like you can you can see the contrast between that and the corners where that nice beautiful charcoal is underneath. The green down in the sort of just above the foot, is that a foil or did you paint in there? That's that's a foil. Yeah. I thought you might have gone, oh, that's the one foil. But the, look at his eyes there. The light has just just popped. Excuse me. Yep, so that's that's, the, that's a foil as well. And, um, okay. yeah, I find, like, if you if you get the light just at the right angle, it actually looks really good. It does. Much yeah. better than what I could probably paint it to look. So. It's almost like cat's eyes or, like, when you catch someone with a flash, it just, just refracts that perfect sort of, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty rad kit. Uh, would you recommend this particular kit if someone was going to throw the money at a P Bandai? Um, so unless you like really like the Hazel design, I'd probably say no because it's it's actually quite a lot of work. Right. And there's like there's much there's more you know more modern kits that like I think you get a lot more bang for your buck. Mm. I like the way you're able to kind of like blend your uh, your flying bases and stands out too, using the black and then dropping a contrast. And there's a hint of them existing, but generally, you know, there's lots of shots where there's a base and you're able to just sort of make... Do you do any kind of like um, brushing over? And it depends on the screen. I'm looking at two different screens. It's, it's more apparent on my cheaper laptop. It's not the contrast isn't as good. Do you do anything with... with um, paint uh, Photoshop there and kind of like make them disappear? Or is it that's just the way the filters are working? So normally I don't Photoshop out the base, but like um, there's one particular instance where like I wanted to do a, a print of my double Zeta. Yeah. So I think you might have that image. And I just went in yeah. sort of in Photoshop and I really like I raised the contrast and I just sort of brushed up the base. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Uh, let's see, we've heard uh, double Zeta. Uh, we might finish on that because it's pretty... Sp- oh, let's have a look at this here. Explain to... I'm, I haven't talked to you about why this fold is here, but you put it in for a reason. This Gilgoo... The fold you've called is Gilgoo Line Art. So, um, yep. So this was like a commission request for, for a Gilgoog, and this particular image was what the client sort of had in mind in, you know, in the beginning. Yeah, and and sort of what I normally do is like I say like um, you know this might be able to you might be able to make this a bit better. So I um, there's quite a few images in that folder, but I basically like I run through quite a few ideas with the client. Yeah, and then um, you know they kind of go and pick like oh that looks good. I want that particular um, mm. you know aspect of the design. So we that's this is like how I sort of work through like a color scheme, I guess. Mm, mm, that's pretty cool, actually. It gives them a real visual um, understanding of you know what they can expect. I, I guess um, I can see like with the oranges, you've even used a bit of like uh, highlighting and, pre- and pre-shading, like down the oranges around the feet and stuff. They kind of whether you just go on a color and then go, oh, I'll do a bit dark and go over, and it's all pretty quick. You just do this in Photoshop, do you? you just kind of like run around with a brush and fill it in. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I know a lot of people will do this when they're deciding on a um, like a color scheme for a kit. I'll get these these um, shots you can get, and oh, I love that with the bit of white. The Gilgu is such an amazing. It's on this old Chevy, um, and you kind of can't really go wrong. They can be candy pink, and they can be black and mean, and in between, like you've done here. You know, the Gilgu really is a pretty amazing. I've got just the um, the Shah's pink and red one, the sort of anime version, which. On its own with a top coat and panel lining, highly recommend it. Fantastic inner frame, which I totally neglected, um, but all around the bells in the base, it's got thrusters up in there and stuff. Yeah, uh, I just we'll just have a quick squeeze. And this is just um, what you've called miscellaneous, but f- there's nothing miscellaneous about anything you do, Chris. It's all awesome. So just to, uh, as I flick through these, you can basically just share as to why you put these in this folder specifically. Um, I think, um, so normally when I take photos, there's usually one or two that, like, I feel that, like, that sort of defines my build yeah. of that kit. So, so some of these, like, like it's just lightning strikes and you get that, just that one photo of that kit, which, mm-hmm. which you know, sort of, you'll remember that by. Mm. Yeah, this, uh, I'm going to say Burning Gundam because it's covered in flame. I'm a noob. Um, yep. Like, that's some pretty fancy work. It's, it's, that's, that's, uh, that's more than just a bit of pre and post shading. 
that's some serious transitioning through there. Of like, yeah. So normally those those fire parts are normally clear, and I was like, I was like, sort of agonizing for quite a while whether I should paint them or not. So in the end, I decided to like, yeah, bite the bullet and paint them, and I think they turned out all right. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it's still very anime. Like you, you can see the work you've put into it, and you can see the, you know, your little signature all over it but it's still got that beautiful anime like yeah fantastic work mate fantastic work oh god look at that look at that look at these funny little feet vents never seen that before what is this from what is this suit that's the double x from gundam x right so i think I think the Gundam X and the Double X, they're, they're really like two overlooked suits because like the anime wasn't particularly popular, but I think like, like just the design, it's really, um, you know, that, that green, that green in the middle, it just sort of really catches your eye. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to work out whether it's like, yeah. a, is that a clear piece that goes over like a, like a tinted clear, you know, like it's a cockpit and it has like shutters that come down when it gets heavy or how does it work as a mobile uh, suit? Uh, so, um, so how it works in anime is that there's like a, so it's got these two things called satellite cannons on the backpack, right. and in the anime there's like a like a set microwave station on the moon which beams it beams energy into the mobile suit for the for the for the gun, right. and it goes through it goes through those green sort of uh, green sensors I guess or that's like the capture thing for the for the power, for yeah, the energy. yeah right, yeah. So that's actually like a clear green piece, and what you can do is like you just paint the underside, like the actual armor goes over. You paint you paint that silver, and you put that green piece on top, and that's how you get that really nice um, shiny green effect, I guess. Mm, Bandai, so good, so good. Uh, there's, there's something seed about them, isn't there? They they could be almost you could be fooled into thinking they're like seed suits. Even the V. Yeah, definitely. Like it's that, it's but that same shape and everything. In fact, um, like you can probably tell, like some of the legs they probably reused for like Gundam C designs. Like, yeah, like the like the the, the legs are probably like very freedom esque. So it's, mm. this is probably where they you know they took it from. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. But some of the kits that have that sort of um, symmetry, you know, things off to one side, like the. The um the new Gundam with you know only half the binders and stuff and I'm a very OCD I like symmetry but some of them when they just have a bit of randomness except for that Moon Gundam I, I can't buy into that that's it's just not me so, um let's keep moving on here yeah um beam effect uh, shields I still can't I know they're doing the best they can but it's so hard when everything else is so tough and material as it's impossible to get it to really look you know great but yeah i still find it hard to to buy into beam effect shields yeah um you probably need some kind of uv light to make them look good and it's it's something i um want to try at some stage like you can take a picture using the uv light and one using the normal light and you can sort of like use photoshop stuff blended in oh, wow, together cool. yeah what is this it's the um, Infinite Justice from Gundam Seed Destiny. Right. A bit of the, you've actually done a little bit of weathering around the intakes on the backpack there, which is... Which is no, have I? <laughs> have you? Sorry. Oh, no, it looks great. <laughs> <I'm> clean, sorry. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> well, we'll cut that bit out. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, uh, Leo, I do know this one. It's interesting, I didn't quite understand the Leo until I saw it in some anime. I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of see it now. I still don't really see it, but I can sort of understand it, why people are crazy about it now. Leo. Yeah, so I actually got yeah, go I actually got this as a sort of uh, sponsored, it was like actually a sponsored bill from the Hangar Bay. Right. Um, so the Leo was um, like, I didn't really have too many feelings of the Leo. Like I, I never watched Wing, I didn't quite yeah. get the Leo hype, but... Normally the the space Leo it's like one like it's like all purple so so like I don't really like like monotone color schemes because it makes the kit look like a bit of a blob when you take pictures of it. Yeah, yeah. So for, I just thought I'd go like out there and just paint this in the Titans color scheme because um, I've always 
I always sort of wanted to do that for quite a while. Yeah. Never had a chance. So, yeah, this was like sort of like a test, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it definitely fit in as like a Titan sort of grunt suit, couldn't it? Because the Titans are pretty much like everything's just sort of higher level, top shelf. You know, they didn't really have a grunt suit so much. Oh, I guess the high Zach, but, you know, not, as, not quite the Leo. Uh, have you done a lot for the Hangar Boat? Is that like a store or is that something you wanted to sort of talk about or was just a one-off that you had fun with? Um, yeah, so Hangar Bay is where you usually get my uh, Piedmont kids. So he's an eBay store. Um, okay. I, so he's Piedmont is for me, is, it's always been sort of like expensive and unattainable until sort of recently. Yeah. Now it's just expensive, I guess, but um, somewhat obtainable. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, we're getting there. Um, it is what yeah, we're is. getting there. It's 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 more reasonable than it used to be, but um, yeah, I get all my P bandai stuff from the Hangar Bay. So shout out to Hangar Bay. Mm-hmm. If you're a P bandai, if you're Australia, go check them out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and so for P bandai purchases for you personally, is it more about like you said, you got that Hazel custom for that uh, client? Because that was the only way you could get that, or why would you generally buy a P Bandai? Because most people sort of buy uh, a P. I would buy a P Bandai because I'm lazy. I'd rather just top coat and paint details. It's already a cool color. Um, I'm happy. Why would you, who can do amazing things, buy a P Bandai? So nowadays, like, um, there's a lot of like fringe designs that are getting P Bandai now instead of a, instead of a regular release. So mm. like the V2 um, V2 Gundam. So they released the V2 Gundam normally, and then like just recently they put out the um, the Assault Buster version, right? And that's only P Bandai, so that's the only way to get it. Okay. Um, stuff like the uh, full armor parts for Double Zeta, I'm guessing that will come out at some point, but that'll probably be P Bandai as well. So yeah. um, unfortunately, it's just it's just the way Bandai have decided to go with you know yeah. how they release kits. Yeah, I guess it's things like they did the the kind of parachute backpack for the easy eight and things like yep. that, you know, that's, that's cool. That's yeah. I mean, you can just put that stuff out and just say, look, we just put everything out and everybody can have it. But you know, when you got to create a little bit of craziness about your product and, um, that, that's their prerogative. <laughs> people keep buying it. People get whinging, but they keep buying it. So make a decision. I mean, one thing I do like about Pete Bunner is that they give you the decals, like, well, for the kit. Like, oh, yeah. one day they sort of really bad, but they release a kit and they they give you stickers, but there's no water slides to go through. Yeah, I had to buy um aftermarket water slide sheet for my PG Mark II. I'm like, this is a 200 and something dollar kit and you couldn't give me water slides? I find that, I don't know if offensive is right, but I just, that's, that's weird, but whatever. I got some. I think they're going to work out. Um, they haven't make them available, whatever. I'm not whinging. Maybe I am. Uh, here we go. Everybody loves Nexio except me. I'm just not a fan. But yours is great. Let's put it that way. What are, yeah, what, so, um... What grade's this kit? This is the RG. Yeah. Hmm. It's funny, because I, I... When the when Double O first came out, I actually didn't like the XA design. Yeah. Because, um, I, I think the lineup, they, they... When they release, like, you know, promo images of the, of the actual mobile suit itself, like, it doesn't yeah. really do the... The design justice, yeah. But when you see it in action, you see the you see the actual kit. I think it actually looks quite good. Yeah, everybody says that. I don't dislike it. I just don't like it. I guess I'm, sometimes I'm a bit like um, I'll sort of like I'll stick my heels in on something that's just like crazy. You know, like the tall geese. I'm kind of like I'm anti tall geese on there because everybody loves it. I'm like, nah. I'm old enough to be an individual. One day, I'm sure I'll pick up a tall geese and go, "Whoa, it's amazing! What was I thinking?" Uh, but for now, I'm a stubborn old fool. And the X is a bit that way. I just I don't see War Machine in it. I don't see, um, yeah, it's 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 got that whole kind of like French sword fighter kind of thing for me. So, but good luck to you all that love it. There's so much out there for you. <laughs> Keep moving on. Yeah. Tell us a bit about this guy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the um, that's the RG Freedom. I did this in 2015, I think. Yeah. And the original plan was like, I was, I actually built this in the justice at the same time. And I was going to do kind of like a, you know, like a twin photo shoot. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've, I just never got around to it. Like I literally just took pictures of this kid like, um, two months ago. So 
it's been sitting in my closet for about four years. Oh, okay. Well, see, you've got yeah. you can bring out those seed kits. You've just proven that you can pull kits out, dust them off, and take beautiful photos. So, if you want to retake, yeah, but, them, sorry, yeah, but literally before then, I, I like I I built it. I took a test shot of it and I put it in the closet. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, GPO one, we all love it. Um, yep. I've got so, a, yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, um, I think I built this in, oh, I can't remember now, 2016? No, 2017. So HLJ were having another one of those online competitions. Yep. And um, I placed third this time in the intermediate category. Mm. It's a nice RG. I've got the, uh, the full burner version, and it's just... There's just something cool about it. It just has so much coolness. Um, yeah, we might uh, move on to your double Zeta Vicar because it really is. We've only got a couple of shots of it, but it's pretty special. Um, a lot of people will take this kit on, and I've seen a lot of people um, do a great job. And every time I see one, I'm impressed. And Yours is well and truly one of those impressive ones. Uh, again, it, it, it really shows your control with your uh, sort of pre-shading and highlighting. Um, the way you've, this one is sort of, you, you see, to me, it looks like you've just really caught a lot of the edges. You now this is new, this is clean, this is fresh. There hasn't been a lot of action and it's, it's ready to go. Um, was this for you or was this for someone else? Uh, this was for me. I um. I literally just went out to the shop, bought it, came home, built it in one go. Um, Do you love it? It took about two months, I think. As a kid? Um, I think it's a really well-engineered kit. Like, I'm surprised they managed to make it look this good, and it transforms, and it doesn't fall apart. Yep. Yep. Um, It just is a bit hard to sort of pose because it's so clunky, like, Mm -hmm. but... I love I love what they've done to it. I just wish there was a bit more like uh, panel details. Right. Yeah. It does. It is a lot of open spaces, isn't it? Especially on the legs there. Yeah. Oh, maybe you'll go back, and this might be a good scribe job for you. You know, because you can see the potential. Mm. Did you um? Did you sort of find this was one that just you know you just did all your normal stuff and it came out, or was there anything you sort of tried on this that was there fresh colours? Uh, like you were talking before about your reds, like your reds on this yep. are just spot on. Um, it just doesn't seem to be as much highlighting in this particular kit. Your reds and blues are sort of more uniform across the surfaces. Um, no, I'd say this is just like a really standard build for me. Um, like I did sort of uh, paint the blues and then I wasn't quite happy, so I stripped them off and like redid them. Um, but yeah, everything else is just um, business as usual, I guess. Mm. Yeah, your yellows and reds, you've certainly got a like a, a feel, like they're very uh, consistent throughout your builds, like around the leg vents there and stuff like that. There's no doubt about that, that you've really found. That's what I like and that's what I'm doing. Uh, I love down the back of the heels there, just little bits and pieces that catch your eye. Yeah, that yeah, that's that's a dark area of a kit. It's down below all the other stuff. You know, of course, there's going to be a little more kind of um, shadowing and stuff down the bottom there. The backpack there is uh, is that just like a a f- one sort of color with a nice again a nice satin coat, or is there some uh, sort of highlighting on that as well? Uh, there is a bit of highlighting, um, yeah. and um, normally I try to go for like a flat. Um, flat kind of look on my kits, but because like um, this was back when I was using acrylics, so I have to normally mix my own um, flat uh, flat coat. So sometimes like it doesn't quite uh, mix too well, and I think that's why you you see like it's a bit, got a bit of a sheen to it. Right. Yeah. When you say mix, you mean like kind of just add a bit of white or or a bit of a grey or something to it. So normally I take um, I take flat clear, and I put flat base in it. And I use that as like a flat top coat, right? But um, I don't have like a specific measuring. Uh, I don't specifically measure out the clear and the flat, so I just use whatever I get at the time. Yeah. So sometimes, like certain parts might be like you know less flat than others. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's all part of the challenge, isn't it? Some people are just amazing at that. 
Yeah, beautiful. It's fantastic. Uh, do you have you entered GB because you're in Australia? You're in Sydney or Melbourne? I'm in Melbourne. In Melbourne. Yeah. Are you, are you um, interested in GBWC? Is it something you're going to look at, or have you have you have you entered before? I didn't really kind of cover this. Um, I haven't entered before, mainly because it's like you know they're in Sydney and I'm in Melbourne, so it's like a bit of a logistical challenge for me just just to go there. Um, also, because I I'm the kind of person that I feel like I need to you know I want to be a bit competitive. So if I were to enter, I kind of want to have something that at least I ha- you know feel I have a chance of doing well. Yeah, and I feel like a, a clean paint job just a clean a clean paint job isn't gonna win win a competition you kind of need like an idea to go behind it mm. and i feel like i don't have the skill to sort of execute on an idea yet mm. and you definitely need to have i think from well, my humble opinion you need to be able to be willing to mob and you know just a really fantastically painted out of the box kit like there's no offense, but there's a lot of guys that can do that. Um, if you want to get attention, like you said, it needs to be an idea, it needs to be a concept, it needs to be that sort of like whole next level kind of business. Yeah. So when you pick those scribing tools back up, maybe that'll maybe that'll get you there. Um, we're gonna probably just wrap up a bit there now. I really appreciate your time. We'll just cover off a few things. Like I've got um on the uh, on the screen there your um your web page or your blog or your gallery. So within that, there's a lot to see. I guess anybody that uh, wants to speak to you about commission can contact you and this is the sort of place they would see all the awesomeness, the potential. Um, anybody that just wants to follow along can go through and see because there's so much we haven't covered, so much. Um, and then also on uh, Facebook, that's your web page there so people can go along and follow you and see all your progress and again so much more of your work to see you're also on instagram um as is it just at saintism one word without any lines in the middle would that be right um it's at at the saintism so i'm i'm at the saintism on twitter and instagram yep and facebook yep oh look there's that is that the finished version of that girl goog you did for that person Yep. Oh, they must have been happy, right? Oh man. Uh, sounds like it. I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's beautiful, beautiful. Alrighty. Um, I think we're going to finish on that note, mate. I really do uh, appreciate. It's a Saturday morning for us. We've got families and children, and I've got to run off to a birthday, so a seven-year-old birthday party, and things like that. And um, so, look, the the reason why I um stalk particular builders is because I see I see individual uh, building and painting skills and I see a positive influence and you know no fuss someone who clearly enjoys building Gunpla and is willing to sort of share that and you're very approachable you know I've spoken to you just some guy out of the random going hey do you want to go on a show and talk about Gunpla and since then we've chatted all sorts of stuff so I really appreciate you are being open and you know being part of the community uh is there anything else that you'd like to share plug personal thoughts about whatever it is you um whatever makes you tick or anything this is your last couple of minutes to sort of just sign off and 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 let's all know you know what you're up to if you're inviting commissions now's your time to do so um share um sure uh so check me out on twitter instagram facebook I'm at the Satism. Um, I also do t- uh, t-shirt designs if you're interested. Yep. Um, you can find those uh, on those social media accounts I, I just linked. Um, so maybe I'll just show you one. So this is a Zaku. That's like a Zaku shirt. I literally just made that out of the, out of the kit I built. Oh, man, that's gorgeous. Actually, I think... Uh, yep. Let me bring that back up. Uh, is that on... So would that be the digital art, or uh, it's actually not on my site? You'd have to go to my um, go to my Instagram page, and the link is there. Oh, okay, all right, no worries. Oh, that's cool. I just put yep. a bunch of old school arcade shirts. I'm looking for more shirts. Okay, go on. What else? What else makes you tick before we finish up? Uh, do you I don't know. The, I just... the community, like, how do you feel about 
being part of Gunpla, does it? Do you enjoy the community, or just build and show people and you kind of because you seem a little sort of reclusive? I'd never sort of seen much of you apart from just all these amazing photos of your builds. Well, it's only sort of this year I sort of trying to put myself a bit more. Um, I think it's also mainly because like I, I, I find it really hard to have the time to put out a lot of content. Like, mm. um, I just rather keep building, I guess. Like, yeah. yeah. I've got kids from like 2015. I still haven't taken pictures of, so that's 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 how um, behind I guess I am. Yeah, yeah. I guess the beauty is that like you've been building awesome stuff since 2014, so you can still go back and take those pictures, and they still look fantastic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, so so I actually I actually moderate the uh, the Gun Plus subreddit as well on Reddit. Which so. So uh, you know, on Reddit, um, on Reddit, you got different sort of forums, and yeah. there's one there's one for Gundam, which I think is probably the biggest Gundam community around. There's like sixty thousand members. Oh, nice! So th- that's where I normally hang out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look for. And this um, we just try to be we just try to be welcoming there, and we you know we we try to build like um, get more people into the hobby, basically, because that's that's pretty much the end goal. I think because more, the more people enjoy this hobby, the more you know the. the, the better kits, I guess, you know, Bando will bring out. Yeah, yeah, the more demand, the you'd think more demand, more volume, more variety. That's For me, like, the build divers thing was not for me, but if it allows them to make a bit more money and develop some more techniques, then, you know, it's the same thing. So, yeah, let's get people buying kits. There's no, it's yeah, and this, this hobby is really all about sharing, I find. Like, you just want to share your stuff, so, I mean, yeah. like, let's just be welcoming to everybody. Yeah, yeah, it, it can be yeah. challenging when someone be rude to you, but you know, there's that whole, like you can just swipe right and just ignore them. Just you know, continue on. Enjoy. Cool. All right, buddy. Um, once again, thank you so much for taking your time out this morning. Um, we've both got other adult things to do and we'll still be in touch. I'm still going to see all your pics. I'm super subscribed to everything that is Saintism and just drool and think one day I'll get him to build me that. 160 scale Kshatriya or something from <laughs> <laughs> I look at the size of those big kits and like I mean the box scares me you know like, <laughs> yeah 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 I agree um, they're just such a nice big slow burn though like putting a PG like even I've got the inner you know, frame of the Mark II sitting over there and it's just the pass separation's done you know, it's just all three different colours just get three cans of metallic and it's just going to look fantastic when I can kind of get back to it. Um, cool. All right, Chris, mate, already for about the fifth time, I love your work. There's no reason why anybody shouldn't go and check you out. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for um, coming to the Gunpla Insider and sharing your inside with us, you know, what, what, how you build and how you paint. So, buddy, thank you so much. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll be in touch, eh? All right. Thanks for having me on. Um, hit me up if you need anything. Yeah. Any questions? Just uh, feel free to message me. All right, everybody. Yep. You heard. You heard him. Do it. All right, bud. See you later, eh? All right. Peace out.